My name's Matt Kaur. I'm a concept artist in the video game industry, and I teach digital painting at controlpaint.com. In this last video in the series, I'm just going to be putting some overall post-processing on the entire composition, just to take it up a notch and really sell the drama. So first off, I'm going to be using color dodge layers for some illumination. And this really works well after you've laid down a lot of painting information because it has something to work from. It does a nice thing with the way it increases saturation as well as value, but it doesn't work too well on its own. So since I've already got a lot of painting done, adding things like the fuse glowing works really well with color dodge blending mode. And you can see here why it's still a good idea to keep my character and my background separated. Because when I'm illuminating the sort of blown out bloom lighting behind the character here, I don't want to have to worry about that edge control. So I can just confidently paint underneath the character layer group. And in doing so, this color dodge layer really blows out that saturation and gives me a nice glow halo effect around the character. So it's been a lot harder if those two were flattened at this point. So it's good to keep a little bit of layering intact, even this late in the illustration. So here I'm working inside the character group and painting some opaque white just to enhance that look of light bleed and haloing. So I am doing some manual painting here, but a lot of it is big soft strokes because I've really laid down all my detail painting already. So at this point I'm really just enhancing the light, making stuff look like it's glowing. And an easy way to make this light bleed effect is to sample the color from the background that's directly bordering where you want the glow to be. And then you just paint some of that color inside the character's border, and you get sort of a soft edge look. This is one of those things that I like to do more on objects that are further away from the camera. Like his background arm should be a bit softer than the things that are way up close. And this adds a little bit of depth of field and atmospheric perspective. Now here to enhance those metal shiny bits, I'm again using color dodge layers to add a little bit of easy illumination. Now you don't want to overdo it too much with this effect, but when used in moderation, it's nice. When you're picking a color to do this color dodging with, it's usually a good idea to keep both the value and the saturation at about 50%. If you go too high, it'll just blow it out and look really bad. But when the saturation is about halfway or even less, it'll look pretty nice. And the color is, of course, dependent on both the light color as well as the material color. Now to adjust the overall contrast, I'm going to go ahead and do a merged copy of my entire document, make a save copy, and do the levels command. So here I can adjust the overall contrast. Additionally, I want to try the photo filter, which will just help me change the overall color arrangement a little bit. So if I were to use a cooling filter and have a relatively low density, it'll give me an overall color shift, sort of like a colored light shining on the entire image. This can actually be really nice to help pull your palette together. And here I want to just adjust the bomb a bit. So I've made a flat copy of only the bomb, lowered the saturation, and have changed the overall contrast just to make it stand out a bit more. And I'll erase away where I don't want that change to happen. Next, I want to refine the highlight edge on the nose. So I'm going to make it glow a little bit more with a normal layer. And then next, to make the skin texture a little more visible, I've taken a textural randomized brush just to have a very hint of skin texture, like it's picking up on little bumps and pores on his nose. And I'm not going to do this everywhere, but just right there to attract the eye a little bit more, to give it a little more hyper-real quality with some extra detail. I find that it helps viewers stay focused on your image if you just darken down the corners a bit. This helps them 
keep their eyes in the center of your composition. So to do so, I'll just make a multiply layer and paint with a soft brush. Now at this point, I've got a very blurred background and a sharp character, but I want to have the edge of the character be a little bit blurred. So I make a flat copy of the whole character, do a little bit of motion blur, and then put a mask on it to hide away that effect. So then revealing a little bit of the mask at a time, I can choose selectively where I want that edge blur to be. You could use the blur brush for this as well, but I like to blur the whole layer, mask most of it away, and then just reveal a little bit. This allows me to, in a sense, paint in the blur. And you can do this same sort of layer masking for any overall effect, but it works especially well for blur. So I'm gonna to wanna to keep my focal points in focus, and then the edges that are turning away from the form make them a little more blurred. Sometimes it can be hard to know when to call a piece finished, but at this point, I'm ready to call this one done. This is the end of the series, and I hope that you enjoyed watching this illustration develop from the very beginning to the very end. And I don't expect you to take these steps and apply them literally to your process. Every artist has their own way of doing things. I just hope that these videos have given you some sort of a starting point or something that you can take, modify a little bit, and add into your own process. So thanks for watching, and good luck with your next painting.